Hey everyone, this is Morgan Beauchamp, and I will be talking about epistasis and tiger lily pigmentation today. So what is epistasis? Epistasis comes from the Greek roots epi, meaning up or above, and stasis, meaning uh, blocking or disabling. So I like to think of it as a gene getting up to disable another gene. So it's important to realize here that we got two different loci. Here we got A and B contributing to one phenotype. So the epistatic gene is going to be the one that is masking uh, the other. Now, there are many different kinds of epistasis, but today we're just going to focus on duplicate recessive epistasis. So duplicate recessive epistasis occurs when uh, either recessive allele will prevent the phenotype uh, change. So let's look at an example. So we have a yellow parent tiger lily here, and let's say that it has the dominant A allele. So that is going to call for a synthesis of a protein, which is then going to go on to the intermediate stage. So then you take a look at the B allele here, and let's say it has a dominant B allele again. So that's going to make another protein, which is then going to bind to the protein from the intermediate stage, and that's going to then go on to create the pigmentation change in the orange tiger lily. However, if either A or B is recessive, there is no intermediate protein, then no uh, pigmentation change will occur. So let's look at a test cross between a dihybrid hybrid heterozygous parent generation. Now we see that there are all possible uh, allele types here. So via independent assortment, we got all gametes, or all possible gametes. Uh, we have a typical genotypic ratio here, a nine to three to three to one. However, there is a nine to seven phenotypic ratio, and that is going to be due to the single um, recessive pairs, like for example, the big A, big A, big little B, little B, and the little a, little a, big B, big B, note how these are uh, different genotypes resulting in the same phenotype due to this duplicate recessive epistasis. And it's important to remember that if we got one recessive pair, then the pigmentation change will not occur. So let's look at a different test cross. We have uh, Big A, little A, big B, big B, and little A, little A, big B, little B. So um, all the possible alleles are in the picture here again. So we got all possible gametes. However, the genotypic ratio is vastly different due to there being no um, little B, little B. So the phenotypic ratio here, we're going to have an A to 8 or a 1 to 1 just due to the little A, little A, or the big A, little A. So that's all. Thank you for watching. Um, here's some references.